Now let's move on to the second part. Let's do a serger. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to push this in. This outer, outer piece here pushes in and we're going to change our selector knob until it goes to that greenest stitch and that's how you do it. You have to push this in though so it disengages the sewing machine and engages the serger side. big old heavy duty lever in the bottom. So if you pull that over, it'll allow the machine to spin around. And it's the same plug, same machine. Then I'm going to reach over and drop that so it drops it down so it's sturdy on the table again. Isn't that neat? Nice 14 needle here. And the groove goes towards the front. So we're going to put that up in there and it will push it all the way up in there and then we're going to use a screwdriver and just tighten it down. A couple of high contrasting cones here and let's get it threaded up. So I'm just going to put this Tex 40 cones on here some big old heavy duty thread and realized that my cones were entirely too big for this machine. They won't fit on it. So we're going to have to go with some Tex 23 and these are I believe 3,000 yard cones. So we'll have to go with some smaller cones. So be warned, don't buy big giant cones because they won't fit on the machine. Not to mention you will get a set of tweezers because you will need it for this. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to run this side. So you're going to put it up through that hole, down and up through that hole again and underneath, like so. Okay. And then it's going to go into the top there, through the tension assembly. And remember, this doesn't release, so you may want to run it back and forth and make sure it's in there all the way. And down, into here, there's another one there, and into your needle. This is the reason why I said you're going to get a set of these, because you're going to need them to get that poke through your needle here like so. Then I'm just going to go ahead and lift up the pressure foot. And you're going to want to pull it back and underneath the pressure foot. onto our looper thread. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to poke it poke it up through this through this guide and then up through it again and down and then make sure you come up behind that guide and into the tension assembly and you, again you may want to rub this back and forth in there and come down and then your looper thread guide is going to go through this guide here like so and then through the actual looper itself And again, you want to take this thread and run it up underneath your foot, like so. So not super terrible, and you can find the actual threading for this on this little metal cover right here.
now we're set up for standard two thread overlock stitch here and you can use that for a few things you can use it for an edge you can use it for a flat lock that's about actually that's about the only two things you can use it for so let's do a quick flat lock and this machine is equipped with a blade so we're going to go ahead and throw that in there and we'll get you in a little closer so you can see it and it's the same pedal that runs the machine and I'm on a pretty pretty tight stitch interesting enough you can change the the length of the stitch on look this very machine. carefully it is right here you can pull this little knob out or I'm sorry push that knob in and change it right there so you've got a one to a three and I was set for two there just normal this is what you'd run so let's go to a longer one nice and close in there we went to a longer stitch and you see how much farther that'll reach out You can see that was set for normal stitching, uh, normal width, and then a longer width. This would be considered a flat lock, and what it means by flat lock is after you're done, you take the material and you pull it out and you flatten it, and that's what you get. And then the back side of it has a nice finished edge to it, so it doesn't fray and mess up your materials. So that would be a flat lock. Let's do some edging, shall we? Piece of material that I was testing my sewing on, and we're going to edge this material. And chances are, if you edge the material, you probably want to go as tight as possible, so I'm going to set it for the closest length that I can. Looks like my looper thread could use a little more tension here, so we're gonna we're gonna crank that up a little bit. There we go. That looks a little better. Oh, well, I pulled on it too hard and I broke my needle. There we are. Looper thread definitely needed a little more. A little more. Gene, you cannot disengage this blade. So, Genome came up with this solution. They give you a guide that covers the blade and keeps you from running your material into it. So, if I wanted an edge, but I don't want to trim, And bolt it right on and I'm guessing just from the way this guide is set up you could also run a cord down the center of it to do some cording on a rolled hem but I've got it on an edge and now that my blades now it's in the way of my blade I'm going to go ahead and finish edging my little project here I've got my guide set up here and I'm gonna run the other side of my material here get it up in there in the needle This would be good if you already had a flat edge for like a rolled or a flat lock or if you're doing some cording. Or maybe you wanted to run over the material multiple times with this edge.
instead of disengaging the blade, that's how you would do it. So let's set it up for a rolled for a rolled hem. take this guide off and I need to take this screw out and we'll set the guide to the side we don't need it no more and then I'm gonna come back here and I need to take this screw out and then I'm gonna take the foot off because to do a rolled hem you're looking at replacing the foot and the needle plate. And remember, the machine is backwards, so remember when you roll the hand wheel to roll it opposite direction. So if I recall right, you don't have to take the screw all the way out. Nope, you can work it right out of there. So we'll take the standard, the standard foot off take the needle plate off and we're gonna put the rolled hem needle plate on and you can tell because it's got a little needle in it as opposed to a heavy finger there screws back and now you can clearly see that blade and it comes up from the bottom dig around in my box of goodies here and get the other foot and I don't think it was ever hardly used because it's still in the original bag And just like that. And of course I'm going to bring my threads out. And I'm going to run a couple of loops. There we are. And then we're going to set our tension up a lot higher for a rolled hem. And they've kind of given us some hints here for a rolled hem. You can see where it's wide and then narrow. I'm going to increase my needle tension. And I'm probably going to set that about halfway. And the marks are actually back deep down in there. You can see some black marks on where the actual setting is. So let's see if that's and close enough. Generally, for one layer of fabric. So I'm going to get this stuff up underneath there. I wonder, I can't seem to get it all the way up underneath there. I wonder if my blade's up. No, nope. make sure my foot's all the way on. Yes, it is. see what we got here. We're going to start out slow. So far so good. Hey, that looks really good. Get me a little bit of a chain here, and I'll snip it. Yeah, and there you have it.
I rolled him. That's the basics on the serger. Not a whole lot to it. I rolled him, a flat lock, an edge. Pretty simplistic stuff. Let's go ahead and let's see if it'll roll two layers here. That looks like it sure will. It's not it's none too happy about it though. It's pretty thick. It's not exactly a heavy duty serger. Here, let's uh, loosen our tension a little bit. Might have the tension too tight for it. This is pretty heavy, heavy material, kind of like a felt. Yeah, it's not like in two layers. My Ricard doesn't like to go through too many layers when you're just doing a rolled edge too. So not surprising. It started it, it did okay. Not super great, but okay. And that's pretty thick. I wouldn't recommend pushing, you know, heavy leather through this machine. I hope you like my video on the Combi DX, the serger end of it. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe to us, you'll see more videos on more unique machines. If you have a question of this uh, machine, leave a comment in the uh, comments below, and I'll see if I can't respond. Thank you!